Schuylkill River, an oasis here in Norristown. Look at this. Come here, fish. Come here. Oasis in an urban setting, Schuylkill River, heart of downtown, Norristown. Hey, I'm Bob Murray, Stella Valley Outdoors. Stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. All right, little fish. Delaware Valley Outdoors, your best source for fishing information on TV, radio, and the internet. We're here on the Schuylkill River, and as I mentioned before, it's, it's an oasis in the middle of a really urban population here. Norristown, Philadelphia is right down the river here, but you have a great fishery here. A lot of people don't realize it, that the Schuylkill River has a lot of good fish in it. Now, we're on a short stretch of the river. We have a dam right down below us here, and we can go maybe about two miles north of this. Uh, I still have my big bass boat. You have to be careful and watch the, get a map and stuff like that, but yet you have a ton of possibilities caught some small mouth, we'll probably catch some large mouth, and we're just going to, to go around today and pick out spots to uh, fish. Got a lot of bridge abutments, you can, you can hear the traffic over top of us. Uh, great structure we have here, God, we can fish hours right around the bridge abutments uh, to see what we can catch. Uh, we're going to throw some spinner baits, uh, probably throw a jig, I'm going to throw uh, a super sinker today, I'll talk about that a little later on, and uh, see what we can catch. I got some stuff I want to cast to right now, so let me try it. And we have a lot of bridge abutments, and I think it's probably one of the, the best pieces of structure that you can fish when, if you can find them on, on a system, uh, or bridge abutments. There's a lot of rubble that's actually underneath where they've actually put the cement and stuff like that. And when you have a current uh, flow like this, in front of those bridge abutments, you'll see there's a lot of logs and blow uh, stuff that's, that's caught in front of them, which actually gives more structure uh, for the fish to, uh, to hide in. So you want to really fish these bridge abutments very thoroughly. I'll be pitching a worm or a jig uh, to each one of these a number of times. Uh, along the front of it, along the back of it, uh, the sides, and uh, because it's just a structure all underneath there and I really can't see a lot of it, but you throw the worm in there or, or a jig or something like that and they'll, they'll, the fish will be in there, so you want to just pitch your stuff right into it and, uh, and you'll see what we can do here because um, it's a current break for the fish, they get up along the side of it and uh, the algae grows so the minnows are there, so it's a really great fish attractor right uh, for a piece of structure. What I like to do when I'm fishing these bridge abutments, especially we're in the summertime pattern here, so I use, it's called a super sinker by Durstein Bates, and I hook it wacky style, which means I just hook it right in the middle. It's very simple to fish, and you just use a, a bait hook, you can use a worm hook like I have here, and I just drop it out, it sinks very slowly. That's why it's called a, su a super sinker. It just sinks real slow, and it gets into that, that column where the fish are gonna be, so they can't resist it. And I can pitch it, and you'd be surprised, you would think with an open hook like that, that you would be getting snagged, but it really doesn't, it's quite weedless uh, as you do it. And again, it, it, it just drops through that water column so slowly, you're in that strike zone for a longer period of time, say if you're using a jig or even a spinner bait or something like that, this bait just drops so slowly. And it's a great bait you can catch, I mean, I'm trying to catch bass here, but you can catch sunfish, uh, crappie on it, uh, all kinds of, of fish on it because it just drops so slowly. And I'm using uh, like a June bug color, a dark color, uh, but you got a watermelon, you have uh, chartreuse, uh, a lot of different colors depending on uh, the uh, conditions of the water and stuff like that, but right, oh, oh, oops. <laughs> Just had a bite right there. Again, you're going to catch a variety of fish, but you can really pitch this into a lot of heavy cover and still uh, not have a problem getting it out of it. It's really, it's a really a great piece. Again, you have to let it sink very slowly. And one of the things that, that I 
try to tell people. So you actually have to almost be a line watcher with this because the hits are so subtle that you won't really realize that you have a fish on unless you're watching your bait and you see that little tick or you see your bait moving off. So you have to really uh, watch what you're doing and then, um, and then come up and set the hook. But you won't get that slam uh, like you're set on a jig or a spinnerbait or something like, like that. Again, with the bridge abutments or any kind of structure, you have a great spot right here. You have one bridge abutment stopping and the next one starting. So you have a great ambush point for the fish. So what you want to do, again, is just pitch your worm, pitch your jig. I'm using a worm right now in there and just let it sink. Because those fish are going to be on each one of those edges. They're going to be on the front part of this. And you just got to cast it in there. And cast it a number of times. Don't just do it once or twice. Cast back in there a number of times because you want that thing to, to sink right through that water column, through the strike zone. Again, behind these bridge abutments or in between like a spot like this is, is a great spot to catch fish. NRA for your free gun safe educational book at 1-888-4-EAGLE-4. That's 1-888-4-EAGLE-4. Mommy, what's wrong? You can refuse to be a victim and we can help. Call now about the I Refuse to Be a Victim Safety Course from the women of the NRA. It's not about guns or joining the NRA. It's about planning your own personal safety strategy. Call now. for your free gun safe educational book at 1-888-4-EAGLE-4. That's 1-888-4-EAGLE-4. Mommy, what's wrong? You can refuse to be a victim, and we can help. Call now about the I Refuse to Be a Victim Safety Course from the women of the NRA. It's not about guns or joining the NRA. It's about planning your own personal safety strategy. Call now. Basically working this bait just by pitching it to an object. Uh, we're using bridge abutments here and you're letting it just sink. The bait sinks very, very slowly. And you, you want to stay in contact with the bait. Now I have my finger on the line. I'm watching the line. There we go. And there I just had a little hit. Again, that's what you have to do because the bait's just dropping through that strike zone. It's ever so slowly. So what I do is I'm just casting it, letting it fall, and it's falling very, very slow. So you have to have a lot of patience when you're doing this and just watch your line. I got my finger on the line and I'm just watching it. Any slight movement, something's come in contact with the bait and then I'll reel up slowly, get the slack out. And I don't like a, a, a heavy worm set hook or, or, or a jig hook. It's almost a sweeping action. I'm using a, 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 an old Fenwick fiberglass rod. I'm not using any high tech uh, graphite rod here or anything because I don't really don't want the, the uh, rod to react that quickly because you almost, because the, the bite is so subtle that you'll actually pull the bait away from the fish 
And with the, with the fiberglass rod, it doesn't allow that. It bends with the fish, and you make a sweeping motion. And uh, hook sets are quite good. You very lose a, a fish uh, once once that fish is taking the bait. You always get it uh, basically up up in the top roof of the mouth uh, with that hook. But again, it's a sweeping set. It's not a a, a real jerk uh, like uh, if you're doing a jig or a plastic worm. So you got it, but it's very subtle. Besides structure. The bridge abutments uh, that we have here also provide shade. And what you want to do is you always want to be pitching your bait to the shady side of the bridge abutment. So we're out of the sun, and I'm going to pitch my bait right to the shade side because that's where the fish are basically going to be this time of the morning or this time of the day. They're going to be on that shady side waiting for something to go out in the light so they can come out and ambush it. So make sure you pitch your bait to the shady side of any piece of structure whether it be a, a stick, a limb, uh, a, a dock, bridge abutments, uh, any kind of stuff like that. Hit the shady side of it, a piling, anything like that, because the fish will just move around like a clock to the shady side of a piece of structure. Bridge abutments also obviously attract a lot of uh, the trash that gets swept down the river. So you want to really put your bait up as close as you can because that's a great ambush spot for, for bass and uh, what you want to do is get your bait right into that so a jig or a plastic worm is probably one of the best baits you could possibly use uh, for that. And you want to just really pitch your bait right, right to the edge of this stuff and just let it drop down in there because that's where the fish are going to be back in there. Don't be afraid to throw it in. Another form of structure what we have here on the Schuylkill are just the weeds. And we have in front of us a weed line that uh, comes off the shoreline, oh, I guess about 10 feet, and then drops down into deeper water. We've got about five, six feet underneath of this here. And what we're just going to do is just work up and down this weed line, or you want to work up and down a weed line. Just fish that edge because the fish are going to be backed into the weed line. You can throw a spinnerbait on top of it. I like to just throw a worm. Uh, or a jig up into the weeds, pull it out, and just let it sink. Th pitch it. So you're going to work this whole area up here just by pitching a worm or a jig uh, to the weed line. What we have in front of us is basically what you could ask for, like ideal structure. We've got a weed bed that comes out. We've got some blow downs in here, and we've got a wooden dock. Uh, it's perfect structure for bass. What I'm doing right now is I'm just pitching in a jig into the weeds and just letting it fall and then bringing it back out. Just pitching it to the weeds, letting it fall, shaking a little bit, shake a little bit, drop it, shake a little bit. We're going to work right up along this, this weed edge with the jig. We got, this is a perfect example of what I'm speaking of. We got riprap just falling right into the water here. We got a weed line, riprap. Got to catch a bass in here. Fish right off of this riprap. Nice fish right off of this riprap. What we're doing, again, was just going off of this riprap here with a jig and pitching it up into the weed. And this fish came right out of it. Nice large mouth. Again, just finding the subtleties. We had a little riprap. We had some weeds. Pitched it right in there. Caught a nice fish. You have a grass bed like this, and you have a nice cement wall we have here. Again, this is another form of structure. You want to just pitch your jig. And I'm really close. I'm not. Just want to pitch your jig real close. Drop it in the water without too much fuss. Let it sink. Shake a little bit. Pull it out a little bit. Shake it. Again. You're going to get weeds on it and stuff like that, but 
that's part of it. Again, just pitch it out, drop it to the edge of the weeds, let it fall straight down. That's probably one of the most important things you want to do. Make it fall straight down. Got a little rattle on there, shake a little bit. Shake it. And you gotta remember that nine times out of 10, when you're pitching a jig, the hit is going to actually come on the fall. So you really have to stay in contact with the bait as it's dropping. And know that if you're fishing, say three or four or five feet of water, how long that should take before it drops. And if it stops before the actual time when it should hit the bottom, you gotta set the hook because the fish has picked it up. Again, you just wanna find a little pocket Pitch it right in, let it drop. Shake a little bit, move it. Shake it. Bring it back in. And you just keep doing this all along this, each pitch. And you can go back and forth, just not because you did one pass, there's not a fish in there. You gotta pick it apart. Really subtle little holes, little pockets. And another thing, when you're pitching into weeds like that, like we have right here, is that you're gonna get stuck in the weeds. When you pull that bait free from the weeds, make sure that you stay in contact with it because a lot of times, as soon as that, that jig breaks through those weeds, you'll get a bass coming right out and hitting it. So you gotta be ready for that. So when you're, when you're pitching it into the weeds and you, get, you feel the weeds in there and you set, pull it, pull it, and you feel it, and then you rip it free, as soon as that pops out, a lot of times that bass will strike right at it. for your free gun safe educational book at 1-888-4-EAGLE-4. That's 1-888-4-EAGLE-4. Wild Turkey Woodlands program uh, provides the materials. It provides a seed program. Also technical assistance through their biologists. The land has been here for eons. It's only mine and my family's for a short period of time. We're the managers and the, and the caretakers of it. That takes into account our way of life and our interest in our hunting heritage. And the Wild Turkey Woodlands program is the greatest conservation habitat development program of any conservation organization in this country. refuse to be a victim and we can help call now about the I refuse to be a victim safety course from the women of the NRA it's not about guns or joining the NRA it's about planning your own personal safety strategy call now you can hear the beep a little louder the Jates program has helped me so much in the outdoors for a long time I didn't even know what conservation even was I want to do my part for wildlife I love being a Jake. Whether you hunt or not, the Jake program has something for everyone. I know I'm doing my part for wildlife. I really believe children hold the key to the future of wildlife. And NWTF believes it too. for your free gun safe educational book at 1-888-4-EAGLE-4. That's 1-888-4-EAGLE-4. We're here with the tackle box and uh, we had a variety of structure situations today and what the best bit 
to start out with would be a buzz bait. Um, quarter ounce. Now I like the white with a gold uh, prop on it. I think that seems, that's my favorite. I like, like silver. But I also, if you can notice here, I put a trailer hook on the back of it. Uh, because you're going over, there's a lot of weed beds out here in the Schuylkill and they're uh, pretty dense. And so you want to be able to bring your bait across the water and this trailer hook, a lot of times when the fish comes up, it'll take that, that trailer hook and catch them uh, versus the, the regular uh, hook on there. So I always put a trailer hook on there. Now, if you're catching a lot of weeds, dump the trailer hook, that's all okay. But today we will be able to get across those weeds and uh, an early morning bite, it was, it was an excellent bait. A lot of uh, fish blew up on this. Another great color is chartreuse uh, with that too. Matter of fact, I would even recommend, this is quarter ounce, I'd recommend even dropping down to about an eighth ounce buzz bait. You might do really well. You can throw that on spinning tackle. You won't have to worry about uh, doing that. Next bait that we used today was my favorite, uh, my Durstein River Minnow Spinner Bait. Um, this is my favorite. Uh, you can use any of your favorites, but I think this bait has all the, the properties that you want to look for in a bait. It's got a willow leaf blade versus a, uh, or a fat willow leaf blade versus a willow leaf or a Colorado blade. And it's got the two colors that I think you need to have on a bait. It's got the, the copper, the gold, and then the silver. I think that combination can't be beat. If you're putting a spinner bait together, You've got to have these in your in your box. I mean, this is this is the only thing you, you really got to do. As far as uh, the the skirt goes, it's a chartreuse in white. I like that color. It seems to be the best around for all around fishing. And I also put a trailer hook on it too. Again, just in case you get that short strike. There's a lot of small fish in here, and uh, sometimes uh, you can get away with this and uh, pick up a fish who's going to just slap at the bait rather than really come in and do it. Again, quarter ounce is probably your best bet with this. Uh, really throws well and it uh, goes through the water. Again, we had a lot of um, weeds in here today. And so if you're starting to catch a lot of weeds, dump the trailer hook and just go with that. If you do anything, you might want to shorten up the skirt a little bit if you're getting some short hits. But I like it just to be about that length. I think that's probably good. A little shorter, a little longer here. And uh, it makes a nice uh, combination. Now, there's a lot of smallmouth in the Schuylkill, more so than you would really think. Uh, and this bait, Fire Tiger uh, crankbait, is probably one of the best uh, that you can get away with. Uh, we're only going in probably six, eight feet of water's tops. So you don't want a real deep diver, so you want something to dive about five to six feet. I was throwing this on 10 pound test. It's probably the, uh, the all around the uh, line test that you really want. Don't forget, we had a lot of weeds, we had a lot of uh, wood and stuff like that. So you need a little heavier line because you're going through that and you're ripping through that bait through the, uh, the, the weeds. And again, one of the things I had mentioned before was that when you're, when you're taking this bait or even the spinner bait through those weeds, make sure that when you get you hung up a little bit and you can pop it loose, let it pause because a lot of times when that bait comes out of those weeds or, or, or gets unhung from the weeds, the fish is going to come up and smack it. So get ready. So when you cast it, you bring it in, you get the weeds and you pull it and you can pop it through. Don't forget, this is going to stay with a pause and you catch a fish. As far as colors go, again, uh, Fire Tiger is a good color. A lot of crayfish in this river. Browns work really good. Caught some fish on the jig today. We have a lot of wood. Got to flip around it. 3 8 ounce jig, weed guard, heavy line. You're throwing this really into a lot of wood and debris and then the, around the bridge abutments there's tons of big trees so you want to have some heavy line heavy stick to get this in there now I would cut the weed guard down just a little bit and you could add a trailer a little pork trailer plastic trailer maybe in blue or black I, I like this this blue color right here a little black trailer and you do pretty good another bait that you want to throw again you can use this on spinning tackle it's just four inch ringworm Okay, I like the black and chartreuse, little color combination, contrast, dark, light. Seems to attract the fish. You can pitch this up against, there's a lot of docks and stuff like that. And it's a good bait. Also blue and maybe a motor oil color. Well, that's probably the baits that I would recommend. And that's the tackle box. I'm gonna switch over to a little plastic worm here. It's like a four inch ring worm with a little eighth ounce weight on it. 
And I'm going to pitch it around these docks and some of the weed edges here because a lot of times a small little bait like this will even work uh, when, you're, when you're trying to find fish. So if you get, and it's easy to cast, I got it on a light little rod. I'm just going to throw it up into there and let it sink and just let it fall and work it back because you're just letting it fall. You're not fishing very deep. You probably got um, about maybe three, four feet of water in front of you. Just want to work it back real slow. And the hits are going to be subtle. Wait a minute, hold on. I got one coming. There we go. All righty. We got a little uh, small mouth. Again, fishing off those weeds. A little one. Hey, I'm Bob Murray. This is Delaware Valley Outdoors. Why don't you come and see us? Visit us on the web, www.delawarevalleyoutdoors. You can stop by the Schuylkill River. It's a great place to fish.